Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish, and today we are looking at lighting again, and this time we're looking at a panel light. Now, I've used panel lights a few different times, and they have been less than ideal, I would say, in the past, but this time I think that I've actually found one that I really, really love, and I think is probably the best solution for most people if you're going to buy a single light, and that is the Amaran P60C. Now right off the bat, for a few disclaimers, I myself am not a filmmaker. Uh, my only use of video for the most part is just these YouTube videos, but in saying that, uh, I have been trying to get better and better and better at both my audio and video and lighting qualities across the board on these things. So it has been a bit of a journey that I've gone on recently going through a bunch of different lighting things. Almost all the lights I have in my office are some sort of Aperture product, whether it is the Amaran 200X, which I use for my main key lights in my main backup over there, or now I have these secondary lights for the Amaran 60X, and then I'll be doing a video on the Lightstorm Aperture 60X soon, which is kind of like my main light that I've been using for weddings. It's definitely a little bit bigger, but I think it's probably honestly the best light that you could bring to weddings or events and things like that if you can stomach bringing the entire thing with you, which is definitely a little bit larger than something like this. So while this video isn't sponsored, this light was provided to me by Pergear, and if you are interested in purchasing this, you can check it out in the description down below to the Amazon page that also helps out this channel as well. Now, one of the most important things to kind of consider when you're purchasing just about anything is going to be price. I know that, saying that as someone who photographs with Leica cameras and I know how expensive and absurd these things are, but I'm still just a normal person that works out of my backyard, I guess, and doesn't have a crazy unlimited budget for everything all the time. And so I still have to penny pinch where I can. This light comes in at $350, which is definitely not inexpensive necessarily, but actually one second. But I will say lights have obviously come a long, long ways from the early days. This is the first uh, LED panel light that I ever bought for my photography about 12 years ago. I think this light was somewhere in the like four to $600 range. Um, it doesn't even work anymore. It had intensity where I could change and it wasn't bicolor at all. So I had to put different filters over it, physical filters to change the color temperature. So just the idea that you're getting a much more quality light with lots more features, lots more output, all that kind of stuff for less than I paid for this tiny thing a long time ago, hopefully kind of gives you at least a little bit of perspective into the overall value. Now, again, there are going to be a lot of other cheaper lights out there for YouTube and for panel lights. For comparison, this was the first light that I purchased for YouTube. I, I think I bought two of these for $180. And I was hoping that I could kind of get the all-in-one package of getting a soft light source that was already kind of round, all that kind of stuff. And not to knock on these, but for my use case, they uh, were not great. I use them at weddings and stuff as well, and while it was better than something like this, it still just wasn't fantastic. So the word of advice in this is to find a light that you can actually grow with instead of finding a light that may or may not work for you at your current price point. And I think a huge part about getting lights within an ecosystem is a lot of these shared components, as well as something like the Citus Link app that works with all Amaran and Aperture products together. And while I think I still prefer using actual physical remotes for things, this is a really, really good one, and I haven't had any connectivity issues or anything like that. All of the lights that I own from Aperture all can be tossed in here, and I can control them together or separately, which makes all of this really, really nice. I'll also say that, you know, adjusting a light like this, all the controls are on the back. So being able to do this and simply just looking at the video on here and kind of checking my monitor and seeing where I need to be for exposure, being able to move that even in, you know, tenths of increments on this app is super, super helpful. Now, one of the things that's gonna be most important now that I'm looking at it is going to be talking about light output. 
So I'm in my studio, it's a Monday morning, and I have the lights off, but there's still a lot of kind of bleed coming in through the areas in here. If I turn everything off right now, I would still definitely be able to see everything. So we can even turn this off and you can see the ambience just coming off of a small lamp that I have behind my monitor, as well as the light back there, and then just kind of stuff in general, you know, seeping through. Um, all that to say, this light, when I turn it on, obviously significantly changes and I feel like works really, really well for a key light like this. Now my output on this right now, and I'm still arm's length, so if I stick an arm out full, I'm touching the front of the softbox here, but I am at 11%. So my camera settings are ISO 800 at 1.4 at 1 50th of a second. And again, I'm at 11% and <laughs> that just shows how incredibly powerful this light is because, uh, do I dare? Yes, I might as well. Let's just go to a uh, quarter. So we're going from 11% to 25%. And obviously that is way too bright. That is 50% and this is full power at 100%. And um, I'll spare everyone having to look at that. But again, the nice thing is I'm just changing this from the app on my phone, which again, I don't prefer apps uh, to things, but this one's pretty instantaneous and has been really, really useful. So I think again, if you're going to buy lights, buying them within the same ecosystem so you can use similar apps and whatnot is really, really key. But I guess that's a subject for another video. All right, so to give you a bit of perspective, this is what the P60C looks like when it is you know, fully made up with its little softbox thing here. And I think part of the reason that I really, really like this is because of that softbox. It's not huge, but when you're kind of like in a pinch or you just need a light really quick or whatever, I think this works really, really well. And now I'm currently lighting myself with the Light Dome SCE on a 200X. And so you can see what a like really soft, normal softbox looks like. This is significantly larger and kind of more of what a professional interview type thing would look like. And so we can go back and compare the earlier shots to this shot and kind of see where all the softness and everything like that is across my face. But I would say that if I didn't have these two you know, shots side by side, I wasn't that bummed about the look of this when, you know, being up close. And that's the thing is if you were doing some sort of talking head kind of thing, if you can get this close like that, I think it is a pretty decently sized light source in general. And especially for people who want kind of an all in one light that does a lot of things really great. I think that is one of the reasons why you know, picking up something like this can be at least a really, really good starter light until you want to spend more money and get something like this and a giant softbox. Now, I think the biggest features, again, about the P60C for myself as a photographer and someone who often is just trying to pack as light as possible is going to be the size advantages of something like this. So while this panel and this light together aren't necessarily the smallest things in the world, I think for the size, they pack a lot of good output and definitely can pack down really, really small. This softbox has these tiny little tent type things, which kind of give you a little bit of structure. It packs into a very, very small little case here. So that is absolutely... Ooh. So I did it, it wasn't that hard, uh, but I guess it's gonna be one of those things that's more muscle memory than anything, and apologies for that noise. But the fact that I can get a softbox to pack down into this small of a thing, which I can basically toss in any type of bag that I need. And then this takes Sony NPF style batteries, which are super, super common, especially in lighting things, and you can get away with using batteries as small as these little guys, which then provide this with a super, super low profile kind of setup here. And the nice thing is it gives you a battery indication light about how much battery you have. 
And if you're going to use it at something like a really, really small bit of intensity, like 10%, you're gonna get a lot of battery life, even out of tiny little batteries like this. And then speaking of packing down light, one of the things that I really love about this light as well is I don't need to bring a charger for whatever batteries that I have on here, because if I just bring the power supply for just regular plug-in mains power, this actually charges the batteries on the light itself, so I don't need to bring an extra charger or two or whatever, so it's just another little thing that I don't have to bring with me. And I'm always gonna bring the mains power thing anyway, just in case I can plug into the wall if it's convenient. So being able to pack one less thing with a light like this is really, really nice. Now, that also being said, in terms of packing, one of the things that is a little bit of a downside to this is it is definitely not very light. The fixture itself, like the light itself, weighs over four pounds, which doesn't seem like that much, but when you are tossing it in a bag or especially atop a light stand, these are my travel light stands. I've been using them for other lights like this Amaran 60X, and they do the job, but I mean, they got, they got a little wiggle to them. And the other thing that goes along with that is that if you are doing anything other than putting this straight up and down, this little yoke, thing that comes with it, it's fine, but it doesn't ensure a lot of confidence. If you're worried about it, you could get a supplemental mount that might be more worthwhile or whatever. I'm gonna stick with this one and think it's gonna be fine, but it could be a lot better. That being said, one of the pros of this mount is the fact that you just take it off. And then packing wise, you're packing down something that is Basically the size of a, a an old like Dell laptop or something that I had when I was in high school. A lot of bags have made spots that kind of work for this size. So kind of a bonus, which I'm sure it's not really meant to be put into situations like that, but it has worked for me so far. Now one of the things I'm always running into as a wedding photographer is these light sources like this where I'm at a wedding reception and they have those like cafe string lights where even the Aperture Lightstorm 60X, which I use and love, still can't get down to the full uh, warmth, I guess, of the lights that I end up running into a lot. And the nice thing about the Amaran P60C is it actually goes down to 2500 Kelvin and then all the way up to 7500 Kelvin. So you're getting a very, very, very cool light at 7,500 Kelvin, and then a very, very warm light at 2,500 Kelvin, which makes kind of balancing the color even easier on one of these, and I wish my Aperture 60X could go down as far as this. And the other thing about that as a kind of like event photographer, I am rarely <laughs> running into situations where I'm actually going up against professional lighting as my kind of like exterior practical lights. They're usually using the cheap string lights that are LED, that flicker. I'm running into venues that obviously just don't know anything about, about lighting in general. So it has a green and magenta shift. So I can go negative one or positive one. You can see this is significantly more green and this is significantly more magenta. I can use this to kind of just nail down what color temperature already exists in a space. And then I just kind of accentuate what's going on by filling in maybe a little bit of light for my subjects or whatever the case may be. And I find the extra range of color temperature as well as the green magenta shift to be super, super helpful. Now, uh, it also has all of the RGB characteristics. So while I myself uh, don't necessarily think that I would be using this as much, I do like that it is an option, uh, especially for things like products. Um, I have, you know, review videos about cameras and stuff and being able to toss a little bit of light in the background or onto something, you can pretty much change this to whatever you want it to be. Obviously, I can just kind of move through all these different colors. Now this currently is at 20% power and is obviously putting out a ton of light. And I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. Not really something I would go for, but for creative things. And if you are someone that is interested in this whole, I guess like gaming kind of concept, 
or if you want to you know, be doing YouTube stuff against a backdrop and want to only have a singular backdrop and want to change the color quite a bit and you have the depth to be able to maybe put this behind you, it's a pretty sweet setup and I can definitely see where some really, really creative applications can be used with something like this. On that same note, it has four different preset functions where you can go in and kind of just set your overall, you know, like daylight, blue hour, the brightest portion, or I just kind of have them set to the kind of normal daylight, blue hour, and then the kind of like ultimate tungsten. And then you can dial in whatever you want. And I was talking about this in one of my Leica videos recently. But the best part about this is that you don't need to go through some menu setting to set your custom functions. You dial in what you want, you hold down the button, it asks you if you wanna replace the preset, you say yes, and that custom function button now is that setting. Now that being said, one of the things I really hate about a lot of these lights is the menu settings, and this menu setting is really great and straightforward. And then you have this HSI mode, which is basically your hue, saturation, and intensity. Photographers were used to HSL with luminance, but intensity for lighting. Then you have CCT, which is basically our normal, what we are used to with Kelvin, and then we have intensity in the green magenta shift. Then we have the gel modes for people that are used to gelling things. Uh, that's not me, so I just skip it, as well as the effects mode, which, um, you know, like cop car or fireworks or whatever, like, don't really need that. All that to say, one of the things that I have thought about though is, let's see, party lights. If I'm at a wedding where there's not a lot of party lights or stuff going on, I could actually see this being helpful. So, you know, just toss this on during dancing and you could have some cool stuff going on there. You have the speed adjustment, intensity, saturation, you know, could work out to be something kind of cool. So if you want to uh, maybe light up a party that's not really happening very much, you could toss this on there, it'd help out. So all that to say, do I recommend this light? I would say absolutely yes. For the amount of intensity that you get out of this, the light output, the amount of color range, the RGB, it comes with a softbox, it comes with a grid, it comes with basically everything that I would need outside of a light stand and batteries. It also is a battery charger for the battery, so it's another thing you don't have to bring. I feel like it's just the most versatile thing that I own in terms of lighting. I can use it for YouTube, I can use it for product stuff, I can use it for weddings. So overall, I think it's one of the best things that you could probably buy as long as you are looking for something like this and you want to bring something this size along with you and you are looking for a light that can be soft enough and kind of fill a scene with some light as kind of like a flood or something. This is definitely the best light that I found for something like that. So thanks so much for watching and sort of indulging in my lighting quest to find some really, really good options. I have a couple more review videos and comparisons coming up for a few more options, especially for people like myself who do weddings and events and things and want to pack small and still get some quality light sources. So subscribe if you aren't already. You can check out the other few videos I've done on lighting right here, as well as some of my favorite cameras right here. And I will see you all on one of those videos. Yeah.